Hello, my name is Lance Edminster. I'm pastor of the Grace Gospel Church. And uh, my wife and I, we run an online ministry called The Good News Voice. We post verses and articles and other things like that. We always try to bring glory to Christ. And it's by his grace that we're saved. And ultimately when we're saved, it is by his grace we can grow in the knowledge of him. Somebody asked me to share my testimony. And before I do, I just want to give thanks to my mom and dad. You know, they have never lost a child. I can't even imagine what it is to lose a child. And her name was Carrie. And, uh, you know, she was, I have my grandma's Bible here. You know, I don't have a script. I just wanted to do this. You know, talk about my testimony, make it, you know, as real as possible. And my grandma's Bible here said Carrie Lee Edmonston was born August 12th, 1976. She died September 15th, 1978. And uh, so I just want to give thanks to my mom and dad. for sharing Carrie and, and uh, ultimately Jesus Christ, our Father in heaven, for ultimately using Carrie's death, not in vain, because through the story here, I hopefully you'll understand that our family can look back at Carrie's death and if it wasn't for Carrie's death, I don't think any of us would be saved. So let me uh, uh, tell you a little bit about my mom. My mom grew up in a legalistic home and Catholic home. And, uh, you know, she had some good stories growing up. And, and uh, you know, was uh, she told me some stories like, you know, one time, you know, somebody put an offering of a quarter in uh, the plate, the offering plate, one of the, and they wrote the, their name on it. And at the end of the year, the Catholic Church would post in the bulletin how much money uh, each family would give. And at the end of the year, there was my grandma and grandpa's name and the, the name of the family there that they donated a quarter for the entire year. And uh, my grandma was not happy. But, uh, you know, so just things like that, uh, she would tell me. But she grew up in her home, and um, I'll come back to that, in a legalistic Catholic home. And my dad grew up in a church that they attended that every week they could lose their salvation. Every week they would lose it and uh, by immoral thoughts, immoral living, and they'd have to come back and get resaved, make new promises, dedicate their life. And it was all works for salvation. You know, they added a little leaven to the lump, and it was a works for salvation. So my mom and dad, my mom got pregnant before they were married, and uh, she actually went to the priest and told her that uh, she was pregnant. And the priest said, you know what, your baby's going to hell, and um, you, are, you need to go say like 25 Hail Marys, something like that. But ultimately, a priest went to, you know, told my mom that the baby was going to hell. And my mom was pretty upset with that prior to marriage. And um, she left, left the Catholic Church. My mom and dad eventually got married, and that baby was me. So they had me in 1970. They had my sister, Jody, a few years later. And then they had Carrie. There was three of us growing up. And I remember the day pretty clearly. It was in September there. And uh, we were riding big wheels. It was the neighbor kid and I believe it was my sister Jody and I were riding big wheels in the basement. And we were building a house. 
my mom must have been coming home from work. We must have got off the bus and, you know, riding the big wheels and she was, she got home from work. She drove bus. My grandma, Dorothy was babysitting us. My grandma lived with us, my dad's mom. And we're riding big wheels in the basement and we're building this house. It was under construction. And uh, my little, my sister, Carrie must have known that mom was home. She come running down one of the steps and she turned the corner and um, split level house. We didn't have a set of steps at the, for the last basement. And I was just coming in with a big wheel because I think I could hear her coming down the stairs yelling. And I was just pulling in the big wheel by we had a washer and dryer there. The water heater was there. I just pulled in there and she would like took a step and she, obviously there was no step. And it was about six feet, five and a half feet. And I actually seen her fall. And she kind of stepped over and she landed Boom, right on top of her head. I picked her up and I got her in my hands and I'm like screaming. I'm like, grandma, you know, mom, come downstairs. And, and uh, I, I don't remember who grabbed her from my arms, but I lifted her up and they grabbed her. And we put her in the car and we drove to the hospital. Next thing you know, I remember the doctor calling me up to the floor and he asked me, where did she land on what part of her head? And then like, I remember she, her landing on the back part of her head here. Well, next thing you know, I don't know, as I said, you know, we're 1978 here. I don't remember all the details, but I remember my dad and mom, uh, Ronnie and Shirley Hines were a big part of my mom and dad's life, still are. And somebody dropped us off, dropped us off at uh, Wayne Johnson's house in Coleraine. And then they went to Duluth with Carrie. And it was three days, four days, I think it was three days later. I remember sitting on the steps and my dad walked in the house. He had a blue goose down coat on. And I could tell by his face. And I looked at him and I'm like, I'm like, did she make it? And he, I could just, that was it. And I remember jumping off the steps into his arms. And he brought me out to Ronnie and Shirley's car. He was driving a red Mustang. And I remember going to our home in Lawrence Lake. I remember it's a pretty, pretty tough time for our family at that time. I remember my dad sitting in his blue coat, with his hands and his face. It, just, it felt like it was a long time that he sat there. And, um, uh, I don't remember much of this, but my mom shared that, you know, she had a real tough time. She was, you know, out of respect for her and things like that. You know, she was, she was hospitalized and had a really tough time. And uh, she went right back to her religious roots, her legalistic roots. And she immediately was like, oh my God, where's Carrie? Is she in purgatory? None of my kids were water baptized, infant baptized. I should have got my kids infant baptized. And a nervous breakdown and, you know, she, she's, I don't know if she had guilt or whatever, but well, obviously religion had played a big role in that and um, affected her pretty, pretty hard, you know, filled her with guilt and shame and, it's, you know, that's why I have a problem with religion today. You know, just, uh, you know, what priest would tell, you know, mom, that baby's going to hell. I just don't get it. You know, and then a baby dies and, you know, they have a, they're going to say that that baby's, you know, in purgatory or hell because it wasn't infant baptized. You gotta be kidding me. And anyways, my mom's in the hospital. You know, and I want to give thanks to some other people in the video, you know, like, 
you know, Dan and LaDonna Adams, Tom and Barb Adams, you know, Herman and Judy Keeler, Mike and Dean Adams. But, you know, Dan Adams came and visited my mom in the hospital. And he shared with my mom. And my mom would be like, oh, not again, she would say. And here he come faithfully every day. And ultimately showing my mom in the Bible that, you know, babies go to heaven. David, David lost a baby. And, you know, in 2 Samuel chapter 12 there, verse 23, you know, it says, but now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. And then my mom's like, you know, she knew God was a God of grace and a God of mercy. And she knew that babies, you know, she had a feeling that no way would God allow babies to go to hell. And she just was like, unbelievable. How great is that? And then, you know, some point in there, he, he shared the gospel with my mom. You know, I don't know how exactly it went, but he probably said, Barb, you know, your baby's in heaven. You know, Barb, I want you to know that, you know, God loves you. Jesus Christ loves you, that he died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and resurrected for you. And if you would believe that, you too would have eternal life. You would go to heaven and forever be in heaven with your daughter. And sometimes, some point in there, my mom accepted Jesus Christ as her savior. And at that point, we were driving up to Door Lake Church quite a bit. We were attending Bible studies at Tom and Barb at Adams' house, attending Bible study at Herman and Judy Keeler's. I remember driving up to Big Fork, attending Bible study with uh, Mike and Dina Adams. You know, Ron and Shirley were always involved also. And somewhere in there, I don't, you know, my dad placed his faith in Christ alone. And uh, how great is that? You know, that he knew he had eternal life, that he, he knew he could never lose it. Because as a, as a child, as a young teenager, he went to this church, legalistic church. And, you know, that said every week he would have to get resaved. And finally, you know, he did come to a point and he did just share this with me. And he says, I finally, as a young man said, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't, you know, go to church, get resaved and lose my salvation every single week and come back and get resaved. I'm done. You know, he just had, he lost all faith and hope. And again, religion. But then again, here, my dad heard the gospel. And you know, we know that Dan Adams obviously heard the gospel from Yankee Arnold. And I have, you know, want to give thanks to Yankee and Betty Arnold. You know, we know three men went elk hunting from Door Lake out to Colorado and heard the gospel. And they brought the gospel back to the Door Lake area. You know, and after that, we know Dan Adams went to the Florida Bible College for a year and uh, came back and was pastor. And him and his wife, LaDonna, started the Bible camp up there. And that's when I got saved. So my mom got saved. My dad got saved because of Carrie. Next thing you know, I and my sister Jody, we go to Bible camp. We get saved at uh, Bible camp. And I remember specifically, you know, I believe it was Barney or Mike and sitting on a bed. And I think it was probably Barney, you know, him reading John 3, 16 to me and him, you know, me hearing as a young kid, how much Jesus Christ loved me and died for me. I, right then and there, I placed my faith in Christ alone. I believed what Jesus Christ did for me. I believed it. And my sister trusted in Christ alone. And it is through the death of my sister, Carrie Lee, that my mom got saved, my dad got saved, I got saved, and my sister Jody got saved. And here's the grace of God. 1978, yes, it's been 42 years since my sister had died. We've not been to see her, or not allowed, you know, to not have any interaction with her because she's dead. But knowing that God is a God of grace, He's a God of love, my sister's in heaven. And one day, my mom and dad are going to see their daughter again. You know, I'm going to see my sister. Jordan's going to see her sister again. And, uh, not for 50 years or 100, but for forever. And how great is that? 
And it's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ. So, you know, I'm, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And, you know, I love him so much, you know, that we're going to get to spend eternity in heaven because what he did for us, he died on the cross for all of my sins. He was buried, resurrected, believed that I was born again. I was saved a long time ago. And I'm so thankful for his grace and his mercy. I'm thankful that he used my sister, you know, our sister, that he used my mom and dad's daughter. And he, we can look back and actually say, you know, that was an act of grace that God took their daughter. And he ultimately used her death that we could all get saved and we could see the grace of God. We could see the love that Jesus Christ had for all of us. Because I, I don't think, I don't think with my mom's background and my dad's background, you know, when the things that were happening in our life at that time, I don't think any of us would have got saved. And that's, God knew that. God knew what, my, what it would take for my mom and dad to get saved. And God knew what it would take for my sister and me to get saved. And I just, I'm amazed, you know, of his grace and his mercy and his love. Now, that's my testimony. I'm going to heaven not because of anything I did, I'm not going to have him because of any good works I did, any ritual, sacraments, tradition, or works of men. I'm not going to have him because I'm a good person, because I'm a sinner. I deserve to go to hell. I'm going to have him because God loves me. And he died on the cross. He demonstrated that love by dying on the cross for my sins. He was buried for me, and he resurrected for my justification. He showed me the pain for sins paid in full. And as a young boy, I believed that. I understood that. And I know I've been going, I, my whole life, you know, I, I just lived like I was almost invincible at times. Because even if I knew I died, I was going to heaven. How great is that? Maybe I took advantage of that grace sometimes as a young man. And that's not what we're supposed to do. But no, I, didn't know, I never lost my salvation. And then, you know what, to know I'm going to heaven, to know I have eternal life. All because of what Christ did for me, I would hope that everybody could know that. There's nothing greater in life than knowing you're going to heaven, not because of anything I did, but because everything what Christ did for me. God is so good. So good. You know, and again, I just thank him for using my sister, that ultimately that her death was not in vain, that you know, there were men out there and their wives that were wise in Christ that ultimately, you know, they knew what a grieving mom and dad needed to hear. And they shared the plan of salvation and my mom and dad accepted Christ Jesus as their savior. And you know, I'm just eternally grateful for these people. And hopefully, you know, some of these people that I've mentioned are gone. Some of these people are still here. You know, but hopefully we, the ones that are left behind, can pass that on. We can pass that knowledge on. We can pass that wisdom. We can pass the gospel, the unedited version, a one that has without condition, that people can hear it, just like the thief on the cross. And today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. You can know you step from death unto life today, all because of what Christ did for us. So, that's my testimony. If you have any questions, you could email me at thegoodnewsvoice at gmail.com. I do want to thank my mom and dad for allowing me to share our testimony together. I want to thank my wife, who has just been unbelievable the last 30 years of our life. You know, just uh, I'm so grateful for her and that we, you know, can be used together, you know, to magnify, glorify the finished redemptive work of Christ. Amazing. Amazing. So, and I want to thank my sister, Jody. She was a big part of this also.
So again, our family is very, we're just very grateful to God that God allowed us, used us, you know, to furtherance that gospel of Christ and ultimately just how every one of our family members are saved. It's just so great, so great. So again, if you have any questions, please email me. And again, I want to thank God the most. Thank God for his amazing grace. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God is so good. Hopefully you can trust in the gospel. God bless.